I'm just instructing these lads a bit further now. Um, in the basic kit, you do get, as you can see, the silencer. This silencer with a normal Pinto engine will give you the under the 100 decibels required for the SVA test. You'll see that one end's got two holes, the other end's got one hole. Which way you put it round, depending on what you're doing, is entirely up to you. Um, if you um, decided that you were going to use that manifold and this silencer, it would be pretty straightforward that this would just go onto the end of the tailpipe or you need an extension to give you a front pipe on there and then you just get these two 38 mils, they go into the end of there, they just push into there like that, they go into there and then that would give you your tailpipe that would come out the back. If you decided you were going to do it on an absolute budget, then you're using the manifold from the donor vehicle, which in this case would be the Pinto. Um, sorry, you're using the cast iron manifold from the Pinto. And that has quite a neat twin pipe into one front pipe on the silencer on the exhaust system. It's quite easy just to chop that around so that it exits out through the side in the body. So, assuming that you've got that exiting out through the side of the body, then that all that will happen is that that um, 90 degree 50 mil would then come from the exit hole in the side in the exit pipe from the side of the body, and that would then go into the front of the silencer just there, and then you would go from there. Alternative, alternatively, if you wanted to continue the two pipes that you've got coming from the original Ford Sierra front pipe, if you wanted to extend those, then you could then use these two pipes um, that would come from your Pinto um, front pipe. They would come through the side of the body and then obviously the silence would be reversed the other way around um, and the tailpipe would then, that would be the tailpipe coming out the end. So there's lots of configurations. I've just mentioned one car, the Pinto, that most of you will probably be familiar with, and indeed we're quite familiar here with it. But depending on what other NG, whatever car you're using for a donor, then you could use these pipes we give you and the silencer um, in that configuration. Obviously, to do all that, you will need a welding tackle. So that is another matter altogether. In this instance today, um, we want these lads to crash on with this car and get it complete. Um, I think they might have a little bit better down the pub or something like that, but it's got to be completed pretty quick. So they leave again, to use a phrase, they've pushed the boat out and they bought some more goodies from Robin Hood. They bought a stainless steel silencer um, that is very competitive price for Robin Hood. We sold these to every other kit car builder in the world, I think. So this will definitely pass the SBA test as far as the decibels if you've got an engine up to about 120 brake horsepower. It's got the correct end for the SBA. Then you do get snap-on tri trim that goes on the edge of the year. So this is pretty straightforward. These lads will fit this. And this just goes into our manifold like that. And then from the from the, this box section just here, if the cameraman can see it, just there, the end of this pipe here needs to be 71 inches. So any exhaust that you make for the lightweight, that needs to finish up at 71 inches. So we've got that on there like that, that's sitting in there. Remember that you've got to support this, or any exhaust that you fit, you've got to support it so that um, it doesn't wobble about because it will just wobble about and snap up with the manifold in. So we've got to support it. So they've purchased again from Robin Hood, very inexpensively, a couple of bobbins here, which are perfect for this silencer. And they will need a little bit of a bracket to bring that out from the side of the body. But these um, rubber mountings, they're sold very, very cheaply by Robin Hood. In fact, they're sold at cost price simply because they have been made abroad in China and all places and we have had instances where the welded stud does snap off. 
if you over tighten that, then it, it will snap off, or we have seen it snap off. So don't tighten it too tight. We do sell them at budget price because of that reason. Rather than send them all back to China, we decided we'd pass them on to you at what they cost to us. But having said that, providing you don't over tighten that bolt, they're quite satisfactory. So you'll need a little extension bracket, and the lever labs give them some um, license there to, to make a bracket themselves off the body to bring that out. Ideally, the silencer needs to be parallel with the bottom of the body, and ideally, the box needs to run parallel with the side of the car to make it look attractive. So they'll do that, I'll leave them to do that. Just a standard uh, exhaust clip, a 50 mil exhaust clip on there. If you turn it in towards the car, then it'll be more sympathetic for the SVA test. Remember, but for the SBA test, we're not, we haven't mentioned that very much yet, but it will soon become very uh, paramount in, in, the, uh, in the words I use to you in the future, that we often wonder whether these testers' machines are calibrated correctly, and we often wonder whether they are really following out the, following the instructions, the guidelines they're given to with, with, with measuring this. Um, but we find that we can gain important decibels by just turning this exhaust downwards like that. It means that they can't um, it pointing the noise towards the ground and obviously the ground is absorbing a lot of that noise. The more you was to turn it round then um, the more it would absorb the noise and I think they'll have less chance of getting their, uh, their little prod up the orifice. So uh, I'm not teaching you um, uh, A nod is a, as good as a wink to a blind horse. Point it towards the ground a little bit like that, even if you've got to just bend those brackets slightly for the SBA test. When you get through the test, you can put it back straight again where it looks best cos cosmetically. So that's a silencer, um, and that's something the lads are going to carry on and do. The next thing is I'm going to touch on is the front wing brackets. In the kit, you'll be given a multi bend tube. And in that tube, there are four right angles, all of which are the same. Very basically, we've perfected the circle wing brackets now on the lightweight after many years and probably a dozen different types of bracket. But we've still got a slight problem is that every set of wheels that people fit, it means they're in a different position to the base brackets that's on the car. So you can see that is the base bracket. And we've got its solid 18mm bar, and that's welded quite substantially via an additional bracket to the stub axle adapter. So there's some quite substantial weld there. We don't think that the failure that might occur could occur in the area of this bracket. So what happens is you can see here with these Robin Hood wheels we've supplied that we feel is a perfect offset that we do have around about a two inch gap just here and probably an inch and a half gap at the front. You are in a position, if you wish, to slightly bend these brackets. You will find them a little bit difficult to bend um, on the car. So you'll need to put them in a substantial vice if you want to bend these brackets a little bit. But you can do that. Um, but the reason that we've got the gaps as great as that is that if you now take the Ford Sierra donor vehicle the wheel a standard steel wheel and you put it on the car then you'll feel that finally that gap closes up dramatically um, which is better than the large gap but obviously for the people then if we supplied the brackets like that the people then fitted bigger wheels then the brackets wouldn't fit so we've had to give them the bracket that will suit all wheels which is wider there all that happens now is that we take this multi-bend tube and we cut it up and all we do, we measure the straights, that straight there, that straight there, that straight there, and we just cut through it, like that, like that, like that, and then we cut that leg there with the same length there. So we cut that into four. The reason we give it in that form is that it's obviously less work for us to do, and it means you get it in one piece, it's the kind of thing that you don't forget, you remember it continuously. Um, and you can't lose one of the brackets. You cut that up and that's giving you four neat hockey shaped stick brackets. With those hockey shaped stick brackets, you'll find that it's um, 
will find its 22.2 diameter tube with a 2 mil wall thickness. It doesn't take much of a mathematician to work out that the inner diameter of that tube should precisely fit on that 18 mil. And there you see it does. So that goes on there, you can see quite easily, I think, to put up job. And we can see that when we come along there, that that is coming quite nicely to where the um, tyre is. And we can see, if it was to slightly bend that, that would, this is at a funny angle, if we slightly bend that, it would mean that that would come more or less parallel with the, uh, with the tyre. So in that instance, that would mean that we've got a, a virtually perfect bracket straight away there for the back of the, of the wing. We come to the front now, and we can see that that will push on there again. And without trying too hard, if, can the camera see that? You can see that that again is virtually perfect. That's, that's so perfect, it's unbelievable. So I think we want to get a gap there of round about two inches. So if you get a two inch gap um, between the tyre and the wing, if you've got bolts holding them on then the tyre won't foul on the bolt head. And what it really means is you've got the perfect gap for the wing to sit on. So that's another thing that the lads will be doing. And then what we'll be doing, we'll be drilling through the wall of the 22.2 tube and just putting a self tapper in into the solid bar. Um, they could drill straight through it and put a small button bolt, but a self tapper would do at this stage. Those of you that, that's got welding tackle, you could weld it on permanently. But that's roughly how the wing brackets will fit. Um, you need to be offering the wings up at the same time, and you need to be crouching down at the side of the car and looking at it so there's a nice gap all the way around the wing and the tyre that's parallel. Some people might see the side points hugging the tyre, others might see a gap. It's entirely up to you. So they'll be doing that, they'll be offering the wings up and trying them on. Along the same lines of 22.2mm um, mm tube, we're going to move to the back of the car now and we're going to look at the spare wheel carrier or the spare wheel carrier, the suggestion of the spare wheel carrier or the number plate bracket, whatever you wish to call it. We are assuming that you want to build your lightweight and make it look like a conventional early Lotus car and we feel that, or I feel at least, it should look um, roadworthy and it should carry a spare wheel. Obviously with the movement these days towards cars not having spare wheels, um, it may be that you don't want to bother with a spare wheel. Definitely if you're looking for lightness then you wouldn't bother with a spare wheel. All you do would be to the two holes in the back that there is that you can just put rubber grommets in and fasten the number plate to the back of the car and that would be it. Having said that, we've given you in the kit this spare wheel hoop and one leg is longer than the other. We've trimmed off the other leg to make it equal. And then all we've done with a round file, we've filed out the holes in the body, the rear of the body, which are around about 23, 24, 25 mil. No. And then all we're doing now is getting the spare wheel hoop. You might just have to pull it and push it a bit, but basically we're just spreading it out or pulling it in so it fits the whole thing. Then all that happens is that that just pushes in there like that and whatever size spare wheel you have in, you just move it in and out to suit. Alright? In this case we've got the wrong one quite wide wheel, so you want to get just there. So that's going on there like that. Um, you want to be cutting a couple of bits of scrap uh, round about postcard size. Um, in fact, they want to be as long as the amount of tube as you've got sticking through the other side. So let's assume there's that much tube sticking through. What you'll do, you'll put them in the vise and you'll bend them like, like that into a little chain. All that happens is then is that you then get them like that and you make them into an omega shape clip by bending them around like that, that gives you a really nice clip and then it's dead dead simple, you can see that, that that goes through there like that and then that clip goes over the tube on the inside 
and then you fasten it with nuts and bolts neatly to the floor of the uh, under there and that picks up some other um, sections that's under there and it pulls it all up to make it better and tighter. While I'm down here on my knees looking like I'm going to pray and I'm really praying that these lads get this car done on time and they do get the money down the pub, um, is that you might wonder what that is. Basically, it's a little opening there. When we were building the car, we noticed uh, there was a void in there and every, we must use everything that's possible. All that you'll do is carefully with a hacksaw blade, you'll just cut the little tags out there to take that out. And then with that out, that means then that you can just go to B&Q and get a pair of nice little hinges or you can nick them off your wife's jewel box or something like that, put them on neatly, then that gives you a flap just there that you might just get a few tools in there in case you break down. You won't get a complete snap-on kit, but you'll get an adjustable spanner, a couple of screwdrivers, a jubilee clip um, and a roll of, of insulation tape. And that just means you've got a little locker there. You could also have keep contraband in there, whiskey, cigarettes, condoms, anything like that you want to have there, keep it secret. So that's quite important. Don't waste that space, it's important space. Right, we're now going to fix the uh, manifold silencer to the side of the car. So what we've done, we've slotted it into the manifold pipe. We need to get it level with the bottom of the car. And we've cut this piece of wood that will make it level with the bottom of the car. Because we've measured it slightly, precisely. We're going to pop that under there, which makes it the right height. Now we're going to fix these rubber bobbins. Well, we're going to mark the holes to drill for the side of the car. But before we do that, just remember that we've got a measurement from the rear lower box section at the front to the side of the car. This is to parallel where the end of the uh, manifold wants to sit, and that's 71 inches. So what we've done is we've took it as plate square again, held it on the mark at 71 inches on the side, and got the end of the manifold here at that measurement. So all we're going to do is put the bobbin in and mark where the hole will be. One. That's what you now drill that. Same holes there. So you uh, probably make that out of your off-cut pack. 
Uh, so whichever size you prefer to suit your video. channel that we've made here as you can see it's like a channel that can go back inside there So you'll need to pack out the bobbins, as you can see, to uh, sit your exhaust manifold to parallel to the side of your car. You may find also the uh, the bolt sections of the uh, bobbin that you're putting on that you need to uh, maybe cut cut a slight uh, a bit off on the inside here. Obviously, you don't want too much encroaching into your driver's um, hole. So this is what I was talking about before with your thread on the inside of your driver's uh, seating area. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of thread sticking in, and that's obviously an undesirable amount that you need to be having. So once you've decided that you've got your uh, exhaust into a position that you like, you can then mark it off with a black marker. Same on the outside. If you wish to make it look uh, all nice, and then you can remove that and uh, 
cut it off with a hacksaw, cut that amount off there with a hacksaw. Uh, if you're going to cut that off with a hacksaw, remember to feed the nut on first, all the way down, cut off your excess and then uh, take off the nut and that will take any bears off the thread and allow you to get your nut back on again. So as you can see, we've got the spare wheel hoop in position. We've actually got the wheel in. You may need some assistance just to align everything up where you uh, want it. We've actually cheated, we've already done the other side. It's a little bit of a cheat there, but it does show you where we've uh, got it. So I'm holding the bracket and Michael's gonna mark the four holes. So I remove the bracket to be able to show you. You can see that I never got right. No. That we've got four marks that we're now going to drill through and then we can uh, bolt the old assembly together. Just come to intervene here with these lads, what they're doing, they're doing a reasonable job. All I'd say is that what I really need you to do, lads, is to crank that tube at that point there yeah. so that that comes out so it's nice and square. It can bring the spare wheel down a little bit and it won't look so bulky. So all you need is mark that with a felt tip down, put it in the vise and just very gently, just tweak it a little bit to pull it down. Yeah. When I pull it down, what do you say, about an inch and a half, something like that? Yeah, yeah. So it's uh, vertical. Yep. Before we uh, go on to bending the uh, spare wheel carrier, as Richard uh, said we should, we're going to first carry on and fit this bracket We've drilled uh, four holes. What we're going to do is on the inside we're going to need four spreader washers as well, on each, one on each hole. And this is just so that when you screw it up, obviously you want uh, a lot of, well not a lot of pressure, but a reasonable amount of the pressure going as close to your cat as you can to the uh, bend you've got here. This will really pull the um, tube down. So I'm going to do that. So once we're happy we've got that in position, we're just going to leave that loose now and then we can mark the, the tube and we can take it out, just slide it out, bend it and then slide it back into the uh, two supports that you've got inside. So as you can see, we've now uh, taken the hoop away and we've uh, slightly bent it at those two points. What uh, we've done is we've decided that we want this hoop here to sit at a 90 degree angle to the back section. So we've just used this plate square again and uh, we've uh, bent it up. So when that's in, you've got your brackets on a little bit uh, around about 90 degrees to that. And what we did first is we uh, needed some indicator so you can take it away and you can bend your tube to a certain point. So we just got a piece of wood and uh, we laid it on underneath the, um, like that. So I'll show you the right way around. We laid that on the bottom edge there and just got a plate square sat on there. and drew the black line that you can see, you can then take that away and that will give you your angle that you want to bend your uh, tube to. So that's what we did and we can now feed that back in up to the mark. You may want to try your uh, wheeling to make sure you're still uh, okay and then put your uh, locating brackets back on and bolt it all back up and that should sit there nice and uh, securely. Then you can put your wheel back in and then uh, that's over that. So this is the assembly all together. As you can see we've got that bolted up lovely there and uh, that's holding it quite secure. Now you may find that if you've uh, come and you've screwed it all together and your hoop still moves backwards and forwards and you can't get it to, uh, to stay where you want it you may need to put it in position and you could just cheat by 
maybe just drilling a small hole there with a 3mm or maybe even two holes with a 3mm uh, drill and just running a couple of your small self tapping screws in but we've got it pretty uh, good and that's very secure in there so we're happy and we can now move on and put the wheel back on these lads have progressed again quite well I've got a nice 32 tooth Axle blade here, got a milk crate, sitting on the milk crate, getting nice and comfy, and I'm getting the hacksaw blade there and put it in the hole. The one, two, three, four, five, six, eight little pits out of there, little um, pieces out there to take out this door. Remember, we're going to reuse the door again so we uh, don't damage it with a hacksaw blade you put in that like that like I said, don't let it slip out and go out and scratch the panel so be careful with that so that's that the next thing is we're going to um, make a number plate lamp holder and a number plate holder so we've got we've cut up, we've got some alloy off cuts and we've cut it to that shape measuring tape we've got the number plate light that um, I think you do get in the kit and we've shaped the top of that the same shape as a number plate light slightly rounded and we've made that the same width of a number plate light okay so there's a number plate light we've made it the same width we've shaped the top because that's going to go